What's good, YouTube? It's your man Rage King back with another one. Yes, another upload to the channel. And before we get started, ask y'all please go down there and hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit that share button, hit that bell for notifications if you're new. Welcome to Rumble Rage TV. This is how we do Rage and Rebels. Crown up. And if you're new to the crew, welcome to the Rage and Rebel Revolution. Now let's vibe. And y'all, we got some news, some news, some news, some news, news, news concerning Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. It has just been confirmed that it is a live service game and requires an on and requires an online connection. Now let's speak on it. Now y'all know what time it is. We got an article here. We're gonna read. We're gonna react. It's just how we do. Alright, so without further ado, let's get into it. The extended gameplay showed off fast open world action during today's state of play stream. Well, it was a couple days ago, I should say. The first gameplay for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was revealed during Sony's State of Play February live stream, so earlier this month, confirming that it will be a live service game focusing focusing on single player and co-op play gameplay. Now, when I first read this, when I see this right here and I see live service game, like for anybody that's been playing games for the past five, six, seven years, y'all know that for some, well, I ain't gonna say for some reason, we all know the reasons why, but I'm just not gonna say why. But it's a reason why we're seeing a severe decline in games that decide to go live service. It's a reason for that, a, damn, a few good reasons for that. You understand what I'm saying? And I really, I have high hopes for this game. Well, not, let me not say that. I have hopes for this game that it will at least be somewhat fun because you can't have your expectations too high anymore because developers simply won't allow you to do that. But I have expectations that this game will at least be decent. You understand what I'm saying? That it would at least not be broken to all hell on release. At least we hope so, right? But having it go live service, especially for a single player game, like I don't, I really don't understand the method behind that. And, and, and if you're going to bring a game like this and make it be a live service, you should know what you need to do. Have plenty of content on the way. And, and seeing live service and single player and co-op gameplay, this game live service right here, this term live service, that makes me, that makes me think that there's more content coming to the game. You understand what I'm saying? So if there's more content coming to the game, less if this game is going to be live service and there's more content possibly coming to the game, can we please handle this game better than we've seen live service games literally be handled the past six, seven, five years, not named Fortnite? But that's that's just me. That's just me. Let's move on. As the headline game of the showcase, developer Rocksteady Studios offered plenty of details on the story and tons of footage of the game in action. In the 15-minute segment, we got to see more details on the general framework of the game, which is an open-world action shooter that essentially blends Batman Arkham Knight with the, flow of, with the flow and action of the likes of Sunset Overdrive. Playing as one of four members of the Suicide Squad, Deadshot, Harley Quinn, King Shark, and King Boomerang, the band of supervillains are tasked with stopping Brainiac's invasion of uh, Metropolis, now overrun by his minions and possessed members of the Justice League. In an extended showcase, we see the squad confront a corrupted Flash who quickly gets up, who quickly gets the upper hand on the squad. Other members of the Justice League also pop up in the trailer, including Superman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, and Batman. So, seems like to me that they're basically trying to do what they're doing, what Marvel's Avengers was supposed to do, just with supervillains this time. I mean, y'all seen, y'all seen. Y'all seen Suicide Squad. Y'all y'all know what they about. You understand what I'm saying? But it seems like when you got the four members, you can go online co-op, you can do single player. It seems like they're gonna try to do the WB version of what Marvel's Avengers was supposed to be, and hopefully this time we get a better result from this than we did with Marvel's Avengers. And anybody, and I mean anybody that knows anything about that Marvel's Avengers game, know that that game was an absolute flop. So let's hope that this game is not the same. I hate saying let's hope, but let's. But again, let's hope that this game could be handled better than what Marvel's Avengers is doing. Because it seemed like they got the right team of devs that actually know how to do it. If you're going to come with Batman Arkham Knight flow with Sunset Overdrive, with a little bit of action from Sunset Overdrive, that means that you guys seem, they all feel like y'all have a team that not only knows the characters that they're dealing with, but they seem like they also have experience in this type of game in previous games. At least let's hope so, right? Because clearly with games like Marvel's Avengers, that dev team, Crystal Dynamics, had no idea what they were doing with anything that involved any kind of superhero, any kind of Marvel uh, IP, anything. They are the only people I know that can take a Marvel IP and lose money. So let's hope that WB don't let this happen to the same, that, that, that WB doesn't let this happen to this game right here. Let's move on. The Arkhamverse returns. The extended gameplay shows the state of play gave us. <clears throat> excuse me. The extended gameplay shown during the state of play gave us the most in-depth look at the game yet. Confirmed to be still set in Rocksteady's 
Arkhamverse, roughly five years after Arkham Knight, the conceit of Suicide Squad sees that familiar universe from the side of the villains. That new perspective also brings in some new gameplay systems, which can be experienced in either single player or co-op. And I'm gonna also say this too. I know I'm probably gonna sound a bit. I'm not probably gonna sound like an old head when I say this, but I really don't see the point. Even if it does have DLC coming, I really don't see the point of having to absolutely need the internet to play single player mode. Like it is a single player mode. I don't. I should not have to need an online connection to play single player games. I think we need to do away with that completely. But that's just me, and that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. Each of the villains are highly mobile, able to grapple, fly, and even dash at high speed across the city to fight confront to fight confront enemies. I think that's a typo right there. And unleash their different skills. Unlike the Batman games, gunplay is a big focus for combat in addition to close range strikes. Each character can be ducked out with different upgradable weapons incorporating elements and details referencing other heroes and villains from the DC universe, such as Captain Boomerang's high speed such as Captain Boomerang's speed force gauntlet, allowing him to teleport across distances. During the in-depth look, we also confirmed that earlier leaks showing an RPG-style gear system and live service elements were accurate, with, Reich's, with Rocksteady further confirming that it will require an online connection even when playing solo. As you play the game, you will gain loot and different armor for your chosen character, which can be upgraded to boost the villain's power in the world zone. So basically, like I said, this is WB's version of Marvel's Avengers, hopefully done right this time. The developers also confirmed that a battle pass focusing on cosmetics will also be present, which will unlock classic variants of the characters and some of the costumes that reference other heroes. Now, battle pass. I will say this. I'm not really a big fan of battle pass games, especially if you have to pay for said battle pass and pay for the game at the same time. I'm really I really honestly think in this day and age, you should pick one. If you're going to have a battle pass, the game needs to be free to play. If you're not going to have a battle pass, I don't mind full price. But the only thing that needs to be microtransaction worthy is cosmetics that that. But that's just me. That's just me. I'm not telling people how to make their money. I'm just simply saying from a fan's perspective. That should be the way it goes, because it doesn't make sense to have to pay for the game, then pay for a monthly or, or, or every six week battle pass that now takes that game that was supposed to be made to be fun and now makes it feel like a job, especially when you pay for the battle pass. But that's just me. That's just me. Y'all let me know if y'all disagree in the comment section. Uh, we got a release date. Suicide Squad releases May 26th. First announced back in 2020, Suicide Squad Killer Justice League is an extension of the Arkhamverse developed by Rocksteady. It will attempt to succeed where Marvel's Avengers failed as a superhero-based live-action game while also picking up where ba Batman Arkham Knight left off. So I got a little bit ahead of myself. So I, that's how I know I know what I'm talking about. I got a little bit ahead of myself, so I do apologize. Notably, Kill the Justice League is the is the last role by Batman, the animated series voice actor, Kevin Conroy, R.I.P., who voiced Batman through various projects in the 90s and 2000s. Conroy died in 2022 at 66. Suicide Squad Killer Justice League is slated to release on May 26 on PS5, Windows, and Xbox Series X. So just next gen, all next gen, no, uh, no, no Xbox One, uh, no PS4. So it's all next gen shit right here. You can find everything else announced during today's state of play right here. And that is the end of the article. So with that being said, uh, as I stated before, I'll reiterate, this seems like Marvel's event. Hopefully, this is Marvel's Avengers, but done right this time. It's got the same elements, but they got a battle pass. And uh, instead of playing with the heroes, you're playing with the villains. So hopefully this time, hopefully this time around with this type of game, we can get it done right. Hopefully. Uh, the jury is still out on that. Very look, very much looking forward to release on this game. I will keep very close eyes on this game, man, and and hopefully it comes out good. I really do hope that this game turns out good because I honestly miss having games like this uh, to play. Um, when I've seen what they did with Marvel's Avengers, and then I look at a game that was released back in 2006 by the name of uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, and it, it's just crazy to me that a game in 2006 was able to accomplish 10 times more than what a game released in 2020 having a $150 million budget, having Marvel's Avengers IP when it was at its height, when it was the hottest it had ever been in history, and yet somehow you still lose money. So with that being said, I do hope that this game turns out better than Marvel's Avengers. I hope that it makes Marvel's Avengers look like an absolute joke. I mean, it's, re it's really not hard to do, 
But let's just hope that they do a live service game right by that. Let's see. Let's hope that they do right by this game and the live service aspect of it. But that's just my opinion. Y'all let me know down in the comment section what y'all think about Suicide Squad Killer Justice League, man. Do y'all look forward to this game? Are y'all going to buy it? Y'all not going to buy it? How you feeling about it, man? As long as y'all remain respectful and logical, we can have a conversation. But that's the end of a video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure making it for you. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Later.